The EOS 1500D is a great first step into the world of DSLR photography. It's packed full of wonderful features that will help you capture a really great photo. Now, if you haven't already seen it, make sure to check out the first video in our series where I talked through some of the more basic features of the camera. In this video, I'm gonna take you through some of the more advanced features to really help you get the most out of your new camera. So let's get started. Okay, so what is AV mode? AV mode controls our depth of field and our aperture in the photo. Now I'm gonna do a really quick little demonstration for you to see how we can control how much in the frame is actually in focus. The first thing we need to do is move the mode dial around to AV mode. The second thing you'll wanna do is make sure that you have a very low f-stop number selected. At the moment, the camera is set on f25, which is great for focusing on everything throughout the scene, but what we wanna do is have a very shallow depth of field, maybe for portraits or something that we wanna blur the background. I'm gonna use my mode dial at the top here to simply select a much lower number. 5.6 will be perfect. I'm going to do this demonstration in live view, so I'm just going to press this button here to turn on my live view mode. Now, as you can see here, I've got three things that are slowly moving away from the camera. What I'm going to do is focus on the first item here at our very low f-stop number that we selected, and I'm going to take a quick photo. And what you'll notice is that the first one is nice and sharp, the second slowly getting softer, and the third one will be quite soft. So this is signifying that we have a very shallow depth of field. Now, if we want to do the same experiment in reverse, I actually want all of the items to be in focus. What we're going to do is select a greater f-stop number. So again, just moving my top dial here, I can see it's moving up 11, 14, 16. I'm going to go up to f18 and see if we can get them all in focus. Great. So you can see now, simply by changing the aperture or the AV mode, we've been able to take two very different photos. One would be good for landscapes, whereas the other would be perfect for portraits. Okay, so that's AV mode, really simple, right? So let's move on to TV. What is TV mode? TV mode controls the amount of motion that we can capture in the photo. By changing the shutter speed, we can either freeze the action or we can have a slower shutter speed, which will capture lots more motion. I'm gonna demonstrate that by using one of my handy little spinners. So in this experiment, we're going to use two different shutter speeds. I'm gonna select a faster shutter speed where I hope to really freeze the action. And then I'm gonna take a second shot with a much slower shutter speed, maybe down to 1 30th of a second and see how much of that motion we can capture within the frame. You can see there at one one thousandth of a second, we were really able to freeze that action. This would be ideal for photographing sports, um, fast moving children, birds, anything fast action, you need to select a faster shutter speed. Now, what if we actually wanted to use that motion in the photo? The second example we're gonna do now is to slow that shutter speed right down and see how much motion we can capture. At the faster shutter speed, we were really able to freeze that spinner in action. Whereas the slower shutter speed, we were able to capture all of that wonderful motion throughout the frame. So the quick way to adjust your shutter speed, simply put the camera into TV mode and use this dial at the top here to select your desired shutter speed. So how do you change your AF selection points? It's very, very simple. At the top of the camera here, you'll notice this little square that has the dots inside it. That indicates that this is the right button to use to change your autofocus points. If I press this button here, I can change it from having all of the points selected to a single point. This is a really great way to navigate around and put the autofocus point right onto your subject. If you want crucial focus, I do recommend using the manual selection mode. Okay, let's talk about white balance. Now, white balance will control the color temperature of light. If you're photographing inside, you might have a different light source than what you would if you were outside, perhaps on a cloudy day or even in full sunlight. You can select your camera to be on auto white balance that will automatically make those adjustments for you 
or if you want to, you can change it manually. Let me show you how. On the back of the camera, simply press the WB button. WB stands for white balance. And when we press this button, we can then see the different options that the camera has available to us. You'll notice on daylight, which is approximately 5,200 Kelvins, it's a very big jump to shade at 7,000 Kelvins. One is a much warmer image than the other. This is a really great mode to use if you're wanting to enhance the colors of a sunrise or a sunset. It really brings out those lovely golden tones. Now, if you're shooting something that is fast moving, you might want to use the continuous shooting mode that's available to you in the camera. It's very easy to activate. Within the drive mode, you can change between shooting a single shooting mode, which just fires off one frame at a time, or perhaps you're photographing something that's fast action, uh, sports, children, birds in flight, anything like that, you might need to use the continuous shooting mode. It's this one here and it will continue to take photos as long as your finger is down on the shutter. The other option you have within this mode is self timer. The camera has three built in self timer modes available to you. The first one is a 10 second self timer. This would be great if you needed to set the camera up on a tripod and join the photo yourself. Perhaps you're photographing a large group of people. You'd need 10 seconds just in time to get around and make sure you're in the frame as well. The second one you have is the two second self timer. I use this mode all the time when I don't have my cable release for the camera. It's a really, really great way just to make sure that when you do press the button, your hands are completely free so you won't accidentally wobble the camera. I use this mode all the time when I'm taking photos at night time and I have a very long shutter speed. It really helps to make sure that my camera is nice and steady when the shutter is activated. The third option we have is self timer continuous. Now this is a great mode to use if you are taking a photo with a large group of people. Not only will it give you the 10 second self timer initially, but it will take a series of shots continuously after that timer. At the moment it's set to three, which means that it would take those three shots after this 10 second self timer goes off. Okay, let's talk about picture styles. Picture styles is activated through the back menu here. I'm gonna press set so I can quickly see the different picture styles that are available to me. To do this, I simply press the picture style button here and I'm gonna navigate over to where it says monochrome. Further to that, I can press the display button to adjust my monochrome shot to the way that I like it. I can increase the sharpness, contrast, and even add a filter or a toning effect to the image. You'll notice now when this mode is selected, as we're shooting, the camera will automatically be in black and white. Now to shoot in movie mode, you need to move the top mode dial down into movie mode. To start and stop the video recording, simply press the live view button, which in video mode is in fact your start and stop. When the red light is blinking on the back of the camera, you'll notice that the files are being recorded onto the memory card. And when we press stop, the red light on the back of the screen disappears and you can see it stops flashing, which tells me that that information has now been saved onto the memory card. Now, whether you shoot in RAW or JPEG, the camera can be set up to shoot in a variety of different file sizes. So let me show you how to do that. On the back of the camera here, we're gonna press the Q button. And on the bottom right-hand side, we can choose the image size and quality. I simply press the set button and here I can see whether my camera is set to high JPEGs or perhaps RAW. You can also set the camera to record in both RAW and large JPEG, which will take up the most amount of memory, but gives you the versatility of having both of those options. A quick explanation of RAW versus JPEG. Consider JPEG to be a compressed image of the shot. So if you've made those adjustments with your white balance and your picture styles that we spoke about before, you need to make sure that your camera is set to JPEG in order to have those values saved on your image. A RAW file is a completely uncompressed image. It is very large and will allow you to get the most out of your file if you're planning on doing any post-production. So if you want to edit your photos, I do recommend shooting in RAW to get the most out of your camera. You'll notice on the back of the camera, you have a few little buttons here that are signified in blue. These are your playback menu options. So when we press the playback button, we can simply use these little magnify tools at the top here to zoom in and out 
so we can quickly jump through the playback options. If you don't like the image that you see on the screen, a really quick way of erasing that is simply by pressing the trash can here and you'll have a little confirmation. Do you want to erase or cancel? We'll go across to erase and press set to delete that photo. When you are in playback mode, you have an option to apply a creative filter over an image that you've taken previously that's saved on the memory card. To do this, we simply play back the image that you want to edit. I'm going to press the Q button now to bring up some playback options. This is a really quick way that we can jump through to rate an image if we want to give it a star rating. Apply creative filters, which I'm going to show you how to do now. We can resize down to a smaller image size or we can jump through a series of images. For example, 10 or 100, we can scroll through in the playback mode. But let me jump up to Creative Filters and show you a little bit more about that. In Creative Filters, we have different options that we can apply to this particular image. For example, grainy black and white, it will save a new image after we apply this effect. A soft focus, fisheye, toy camera, or miniature mode. So for this example, I'm going to select toy camera. When I press set, you can see there that the filter has been applied over to the image that I've taken. If I press set one more time, it asks me, would I like to save a new file? I'm going to press OK. And I'll now have two images saved of that photo. The first one will be the original and the second one will be with my creative filter applied to it. You can then go along and apply the same creative filter to a variety of different images. When shooting in manual mode, you now have control over both the shutter speed and the aperture. To control the shutter speed, we simply use this dial at the top here. But if we want to change our aperture, we need to hold down the AV button on the back of the camera and then use the same control dial to control the aperture. You can see there that the little yellow arrows are jumping from one mode to the other to let you know which one you can change by using the top mode dial. If you're not too sure what shutter speed or aperture would be suitable for your shot, why don't you try taking a few photos with the creative auto mode that's built into this camera. On the top of the mode dial here, simply move it around to CA, which stands for creative auto. On the back of the screen, you'll notice that you have different options to control the ambience in the shot. These range from standard settings to vivid, soft, warm, intense, cool, bright, dark and monochrome. By changing these, you can really change the look and feel of your image. The other very easy thing to change in creative auto mode is whether you want the background to be nice and blurred or whether you want it to be sharp. Simply by moving this scale here, you'll notice to the right hand side, it will make everything sharp and to the left hand side, you can help to blur your background. This is a nice, easy way to introduce you into shutter speeds and apertures. Another really quick and easy way to help you get the most out of this camera is to use one of the camera's built-in mode dials. For example, if you're taking photos of people, you might like to set it around to portrait mode. As you can see, portrait mode is really great for making sure those backgrounds are nice and soft. Landscape mode gives you a wide depth of field to make sure that everything is nice and sharp and in focus. You have close-up mode here, which is great for photographing small items like a flower or something with great detail. And sports mode, which is perfect for shooting in continuous mode, so your high-speed action shots. You also have a food mode here, which makes all the food look nice and vibrant and fresh, increasing the saturation on your shots. And night portraits, a great way to take photos of people at nighttime. As you can see, the 1500D really is packed full of features to help you get the most out of your photography. So I hope this video has helped you get to know your new camera a little bit better, and I really hope that you enjoy your photography.